There you go, that's what I'm gonna talk a lot about today. New bike, bloody fantastic. That's the first 700 meters and it's, yeah, I'm used to it. <laughs> Tell you more in a minute. But it's now that the, uh, that the impressions come flooding to mind. It's early, 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 early on a new bike that you notice the biggest differences and Well, I haven't, I haven't really turned a corner, so I can't tell you about the steer. That was the only corner I've taken, or second corner. But, um, okay. By the end of this straight, I'll have conjured some things to say, and I'll talk to you then. Zen. There's gonna be a window in that wall uh, after the weekend. I know, because I went there yesterday and I talked to Bruce, one of the owners, and we talked about selling scooters or e-bikes rather electronic bikes in a motorcycle shop anyway to the bike that i'm riding after i take a little look at this quite a textured sky you know what's coming up don't you sydney siders i'll try and refrain but I'm going there, Heffron Park. Side of conquests by cycling royalty, the most celebrated goat track of Sydney's eastern suburbs. And I'm going there with a purpose to basically ignore my complaints about how little renovation has been done for the road that they race on and talk about the bike early, early, early in my time aboard the La Pierre Velius SL. Right, there she is in all her glory. I'm sure there's still concrete everywhere and the renovations that I was promised would happen haven't even been considered anyway, but neither here nor there. So that's kind of the shot I did when I started with the trek to say, look how stable this bike is. And I'm doing it again on this and I'm just now hit 10 kilometers just then so first 10k on this bike am i comfortable and uh, at ease oh, that's for me to determine and you to maybe nod along to but yeah i feel pretty good yeah actually i feel great i feel fast i feel in a better position slightly i'll tell you more in a sec Certainly plenty of renovations being done to the footy fields and probably the netball courts and probably the gymnastics stadium, if there is one here. Uh, but by my reckoning, the road surface of Heffron Park is status quo. Shock. <gasps> Who would have thunk it? Okay, so let's see how this sucker climbs because I'm about to go over what Paul Craft calls the pimple. Ah, so funny. We just stay a tiny little hill. And just to be clear, I was being ironic about testing the climbing because that's, it's, it is just a pimple, it's not. <laughs> but the bike feels light. That's one thing I'll say. I oh, know it is light because I know it's eight kilos. I oh, know it's probably a little bit lighter because keen observers will have noticed that I swapped the Shimano pedals, which were on for photographic purposes, with my Time oh, X-Pro pedals that I've been using for a while. And I did that because I didn't want to fuff around with changing cleats and I wanted to use my nimble shoes because they're, well, they're beautiful and they're ultimate. And uh, I've got time cleats on them, so I just did that. And the time pedals are, well, I'll weigh them and I'll tell you they're about that much lighter than um, the Shimano Altegra pedals that Hayden kindly installed at Tune Cycles just so I could take some photos and get my measurements right. And tell you what, even with the different pedal system, I've got my measurements bloody perfect. Yeah, really good. I'm happy with that. More in a sec.
My original plan had to be to, to stop here after riding a few laps and talk to you about it and go component by component, but I am at Heffron Park and anyone who knows me knows I hate this place. So I'm gonna go somewhere where there's a better view and, and no people are uh, listening in because I get a bit shy. Yeah, I'm back here, but with a reason, because I can go out to the end, I can sit on the wall and I can talk to you about the bike and I'll do that and I won't be distracted. And also then I can film some shifting and talk to you about different things that I'm noticing while going from Shram to Shimano for the first time in a hundred years. Well, a little, quite a while. Contrast, purple and yellow, right? I remember when I was young, I had a book that had all about contrast, purple and yellow, there you go, opposite ends of the spectrum, and that was just illustrated, hopefully. There's quite a, a swell in the bay, what's that all about? I mean, it's minor, but usually it's not like that. Anyway, who cares about the water, Rob? If they wanna know about the bike, tell them about the bike. I will, wait for me to sit down and I'll tell you. So I thought I'd do things differently because usually when I do a bike test, I'm like, I'm going to tell you about all of the little bits and pieces as I um, get my sensations and, and understand what the bike's like to ride. And then I eventually just get used to the bike and I forget to do that. So I'm going to start from the, I'm going to go front to back, component by component, and try and get this all done and dusted on the first ride because I'm 20k in to my very first uh, adventure on this bike. and. Um, already completely and utterly comfortable on it. I love it. Uh, I also think I've uh, demonstrated with uh, enough of the filming that it changes colours quite dramatically, depending on the light. I'd really like that uh, disc brake stop sort of noisy. What is that? Anyway, there's some construction going on in the background. You can hear the stevedores at work, but uh, let's just ignore the, the different sounds. Let's go start to finish, back to front, or front to back. Uh, the Wahoo element bolt is easily affixed to a uh, little um, a little fastening device that sits at the front of the stem. That's um, pretty bloody neat and simple. And you can also put a, a second mount underneath on the bracket that's supplied by LaPierre. So you can have light and computer, camera and computer, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's terrific. Uh, the stem is neat as can be. I think it's great. Uh, I watched... Uh, Hayden put it together and I'm glad that I didn't put it together because, well, well, I just, you know, I don't have that kind of patience. But he did really well and he said, to be honest, it was pretty simple and once you get it done, it looks terrific and I agree. And when you look at bikes with all the cabling around them, around that front area, the cockpit area, as some people like to call it, it, it does look so cumbersome and this is neat, neat, neat and very functional. And I'm glad we trimmed the top of the, the steerer just so that it looked tickety-boo. Position is just right. So it's a little bit lower than the Trektomani. I've made that clear that the Trektomani is quite uh, high because it's an all-day comfort bike, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, but this is a position that's more akin to what I'm used to on the Focus is Alco Max, right. Levers, you know what levers are. Wow, there's a lot I can say about them. First of all, like obviously you know the shifting system, so bink, bink for, for the back and then bink, bink on this side for the front. But you can change it around. There's a Shimano app. Someone told me about it on uh, on a, another YouTube video where I was talking about the SRAM app that I filmed and recorded and posted years ago. The link's probably below if I can remember to do that. Um, but, and um, I can, the, the, the person who made a comment about the apps was explaining that you can switch it around so you can have it basically what you're used to. So if you're used to the SRAM system and then you just go to a test bike that's got Shimano on it only for a little while, then just you can you document your preferences and I mean you can adjust your preferences and shift accordingly. So that's interesting. The hoods, they're, they're actually really small. Now when STI, Shimano Total Integration, came into play in the early 90s or actually late 80s to be honest, thanks Phil Anderson for being the prototype rider. Um, 
they there was this sort of talk about hey but the levers are getting way too big and we want them nice and small and this and that and then as things evolved people realized actually if you have more to hold on to it's it's actually better so then with the advent of hydraulic hoses instead of cables for disc brakes instead of rim brakes and so on and so forth this got a little bit more complicated because you have to have a little housing for bits and pieces that didn't exist and then the same applied with electronic shifting so what we've seen is a huge evolution in lever shape shimano seems to have reached the uh the largest in an earlier generation of Shimano Di2 because this one's quite, it's actually really quite nimble and small and it's very, very neat and there's nothing here at the end of the hood that makes you want to fiddle and sort of adjust it and try and get it just so. Maybe that happens on some SRAM levers occasionally. Anyway, I think it's pretty bloody neat and it's bloody comfortable and as I've referenced quite a bit, I had surgery on this hand and I've got a, an incision or it was, there was a slice, there was a, I was cut here and um, so I, I'm quite delicate and I'm very aware of my ergonomics at the moment. And I can say the ergonomics on this are terrific. And yeah, that, that's one thing. Handlebars, let's have a look at them. Okay. So I'll show you that because when we pulled them out of the box, we're like, that's a weird bend. That doesn't seem to add up. And then we, we stuffed around a little bit or we, we just ensured that I had sort of this arrangement, kind of how it felt good while I was in the workshop. And on the road, I can say we got it exactly right because these are great. There's a, a little bit of a bend here. I hope that's showing up on the camera. My preview screen's gone blank. But um, that sort of means that you're not banging your wrist here. Does that make sense? So fantastic. Handlebar tape, by up here. Whew, really, yeah, nice. I mean, all pretty much all contemporary handlebar tape is neat and good on the hand, out of the box and first ride. So no surprises there. Fork, I'll say this, see this. Like, I think it's not quite as dramatic as the Trek Domani, but the wide crown is something that I, I'm warming to. Actually, I really like, in fact, I mean, we're not talking about uh, Hope bikes, Hope slash Lotus track bikes, you know, with the big pshaw, pshaw that they uh, use for the uh, Team GB. But I, I just sort of feel like there used to be this trend of going real narrow like that, but now it's sort of like that. Does that make sense? Bunch going by, I hope they don't hear me up here and then come up and see all, all the fusses up there. Um, so I got to thinking when I was on the Trek to Marnie that I had this sort of placebo effect saying that I started to think that the airflow around there was making it more stable and blah, blah, blah. But I haven't gone fast on this yet. I've just been tootling around, just getting used to it. And um, I can't tell you if it's got aero advantages or not. I don't even think this is uh, LaPierre's aero bike. I think it's more or less their climbing lightweight bike. Here it's a Zealius SL, which is to say super light. Uh, I'll try and keep things quick. Okay, tyres, they are... Yeah, they're 32, so it says 32, so I know that they're 32, so they're Goodyear Eagle F1, a tubeless complete, and uh, with the tan sidewalls, you can get them in black as well, and um, these are hooked rims, 36 mil depth, and I really like the shallower ones, it suits me, and it, it just um, doesn't mean you get blown around in crosswinds, but you still get sort of some of the aero cues that you expect from a rim. Uh, of this price bracket, let's say. But the here, look, I did run the calipers over it and it measures 29.7 or something mil. So it's for their 30 mil tool at top, 30 mil tires. I'll check the internals of the Shimano rims, but um, they are hooked. So anyway, that's how they work out. On different rims, they're going to be a bit wider and I've actually used these on my Focus with Zip 303 hookless rims, and they do appear quite a lot wider. I can do a compare and contrast rim when I get home, because I think these tyres are on that bike, and I'll measure and, and, and explain accordingly. Uh, opted to not go with any power today, so boom. I did a little explanation before I um, set off on this ride, saying how I'm, I'm, I'm accustomed to having power, so I might flip over the pedals from the Shimano that were on this for original photos and put on the Wahoo 
power pedals. They've got a different name, I think, but I can't remember what it is. And then I can just, you know, um, pair it to my Wahoo Element Bolt and off we go and I'll get the data. But then I wanted to wear these shoes, which have got, um, which are just my preference at the moment. And these have got, these have the time cleats on them. So I just put the time pedals on. That's why they're there and they're light. And I'll, um, I explained earlier while riding, I'll, I'll weigh these and I'll weigh the new generation Shimano or Tegra and I'll give you a compare and contrast. I'm trying to keep this quick, trying to keep this quick. Straight post, right? As in no setback. Can you see that? And um, I thought that that might be a bit jolty, but it's, I think yeah, it's a 27.2. It was um, not the neatest fastening system that you could get because there are some really trick ones in the, in the modern world, but that one's pretty suitable. It's a round post, which I haven't had for a while, like, um, or maybe, maybe, maybe on the Canyon Grail. I can't remember. Anyway, um, on the uh, Cervelo Caledonia, on my Focus is Alco Max, on the Trek Domani, they're all like a, more or less a D shape. So, in other words, you can't get your saddle nose off, you know, tilted. In other words, if you put your saddle on, it's going to be straight, but with the round post, uh, anyway, boring. Um, yeah, yeah, carbon fiber. For the record, handlebars are carbon fiber as well. Sorry to say for the record. Um, front shifting, I can't really tell you a hell of a lot about it because I haven't really done that, but um, it sounds nice. Should we listen? I'll put it closer to the camera. Anyway, isn't that neat? Uh, moving right along, cranks uh, 172 and a half as per usual. I didn't really notice. Well, I can't comment on the cranks because I, I just used them and I, I didn't. They didn't stand out. Um, okay, gear ratio. That's a topic of, of the times, isn't it? So I think it's a tw uh, 12. Oh, what's that? 32. Probably, but I think see this derailleur, see that. Like maybe you're getting used to it now because it's pretty common in 2022. But if you look at the hanger on that derailleur versus the hanger on a derailleur from a bike from 10 years ago, you'll just be like, what? Why? Why did they do it like that for so long? as in have these tiny little things. But anyway, this gives you full range. And the idea is that Shimano, Altegra, DI2, the current generation, I can't remember the number of it, it um, is suitable for the, the full range. So you can take it up to 36 or probably even a bigger. Another bunch, I don't know. Um, anyway, so that's pretty much a good little opening overview. This is neat, isn't it? Don't you think that's pretty? I mean, I'm going to film a lot of that because it's sort of one of the standout features of the LaPier bike. And um, I think it's really quite nice. And did, uh, did I notice anything about its comfort? Uh, no, I haven't really flogged it. I've only done 20K. So I'm going to show you another thing. I'm just flipping it around. Oof, see that? I've been looking at it, so now I'll show you. See this little finish here? I like that. You know, this is, listen. That's got that matte finish and this is gloss. So with a little bit of dribble from the from the uh, drink bottle. So um, that's neat, isn't it? Okay. I'm actually a bit worn out from doing all of that, but at least I've documented it on my first ride after the first 20 Ks. And I've just given you a little overview of this bike and you're gonna hear a little bit more about it as time progresses. But um, I have sped talked, I've speed talked, I've, I've talked fast to just try and get all of those thoughts out without uh, pedalling along and being distracted by traffic and, and stuff. But I have to say there's some pretty big bloody surf over there at Bear Island, so I'm going to go and take a peek at that, and I might do that shot as I go across the Timber Bridge, but with surf in the background, and you can see the slow mos of this bike as it's in action. Okay. That's it for now. Early, early, early days on this bike, but um, so far, pretty bloody good. Any questions, leave a comment, and um, 
yeah, thanks for watching. And um, I hope all that made sense. I've got no script quite clearly. All right, see you. Bye.